Fight Saturday with Tim Kavanaugh. Tonight, Archer Mayer. With musical guest, Banjo Dan. And now from Alumni Auditorium, here's Tim. Thank you. My goodness gracious. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Wow, what a wonderful audience. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Oh, very good. Right on cue, too. <laughs> hey, what do you think about this? Thomas Salmon has prevailed in the vote recount for Vermont State Auditor. You know, although confident that he would win, Salmon said that it was an upstream battle. Yeah. <laughs> the University of Vermont will soon be on board with more discreet use of social security numbers and has said that they will no longer be used as student and staff identifiers. Well, that's all good and everything, but uh, I think someone ought to look into what the motor vehicle department is doing. <laughs> and in Burlington recently, a police cruiser was heavily damaged when it collided with a pickup truck. Now, rumor has it that the Burlington Police Department employs Lindsay Lohan as a driving consultant. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of law enforcement, did everybody hear about this big drug bust down in Barrie just a little while ago? Yeah. Police announced that they, that they had the arrest of nearly a dozen dealers in the first phase of a plan to rid the city of crack problems. The second phase involves distributing belts and suspenders to local plumbers. <laughs> Oh boy, and what a, <laughs> yeah, the visual just kicked in, didn't it? <laughs> and this winter sure has been warm. Uh, so warm, in fact, that the ski areas are having a little bit of a struggle out there. And Ben and Jerry's has just announced that they were gonna have to switch over to serving soft serve ice cream only. Uh... Always the groaner at the end. <laughs> All right, folks, brace yourselves. We do have a terrific show for you tonight. We have author Archer Mayer with us. <laughs> That's right. Plus, plus, we're going to hear some great sounds from Banjo Dan. But you know what it's time for? It's time to head up to you folks in the studio audience and play that game, that word game, and we'll do it with Lois the Hot Dog Lady and the Word of the Week. If you're coffee break banter you'd like to embellish We've got a feature you're sure gonna relish It'll brighten your demeanor Will it make me feel smart? You bet your wiener Come on, let's take a peek Here's Lois with the word of the week Bumptious Bumptious Sounds like fun to me Yeah, could you stand up please? If you go down <laughs> <laughs> I can't. We'll, we'll be out of the lighting. Oh, this God, is perfect. We no, we need you in the light. I'm Tim. Hi, I'm Pam. Pam, nice to meet you. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm very Happy good. New Year. Happy New Year Happy to New you. Year. Did you have a nice holiday? Wonderful. Yeah, we should have you on as a guest sometime. You're very nice to talk to. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'll go home and think of things to say. All right, we've got to play the game, though. Do you want to win a prize? Well, yeah. I know you do. All right. Do I get to take you home with me? Uh, you're going to have to talk to Mrs. Kavanaugh. <laughs> All right, I'm game. What the hell? Yeah. 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 So All right. Year. It is a new year. New Year's resolution. They're out the window right okay. now as we okay. speak. All right, we're going to play this game. You ready to go? I am. All right, I'm going to give you the word again, then we're going to define it for you. Here comes that word one more time. Okay. Bumptious. All right. Is the correct definition of bumptious A, crudely or loudly assertive or pushy, kind of like you, or... <laughs> Or is Bumptious Pamela Anderson's high school nickname? Oh. Whoa. Whoa. You, know, you didn't know my maiden name was Anderson, did you? <laughs> and your first name is Pam. Pam. Oh. <laughs> I, I have. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, but you don't get to win a prize now, so I got you. <laughs> I'll go with the first one. You're going to go with the first one. Is she correct, everybody? <laughs> All right. Miss Jen Jen, go ahead and spin that wheel. All right, let's find out what you have won. 
What's it gonna land on? What have we got? Oh my goodness, JP. Did you get both of them? It's right in the middle, I got both. No. Spin it we're again. Gonna, we're gonna spin it again? Well, Miss Jen Jen's up here. All right, but magically she spins the wheel anyways. <laughs> Miss, Miss Jen Jen all of a sudden has a five o'clock shadow. <laughs> all right, and look at this. It has now landed on the Green Mountain Inn. You have won yourself, Pam. A night stay with full breakfast at the Green Mountain Inn in lovely Stowe, Vermont, featuring an acclaimed restaurant and 100 guest rooms located in the Stowe Village. Isn't that wonderful? It's awesome. Plus, you've also won this, not Jen Jen, but a jar, <laughs> like the dress a jar of Jed's Maple Mud made right here in Vermont, up in the Northeast Kingdom. It's and you can awesome. go to. I've had it. You've had it before? Yeah, good great. on ice cream. It's excellent on ice cream. It is. Even soft serve. Even Ben and Jerry soft serve. All right, be sure to listen to Classic Hits Cool 105 for details about upcoming episodes. And we'll be right back with more Late Night Saturday right after this. Hayes Ford Lincoln Mercury in beautiful Newport, Vermont. Visit HayesFord.com for their complete selection. Tonight's episode of Late Night Saturday is brought to you by Promiscuity. Specially formulated with penicillin for those who just can't say no. Kind of like Pamela up in our audience tonight. <laughs> Isn't that right, dear? See? I wasn't wrong. Hey, folks, to learn more about Late Night Saturday or to request tickets to attend a taping, log on to our website at latenightsaturday.com. You know, speaking of websites, I think it's time once again for another installment of actual wacky websites. All right. Hey, there, folks, in my hands are actual websites. Uh, like this one right here, there's an Italian power generating company, and they can be found by logging on to. <laughs> yes, indeed. Kind of, uh, kind of sounds like the superhero for the ambiguously gay duo or something. I don't know. <laughs> All right, and if you're looking for IP solutions, look no further than. IP anywhere. <laughs> Place must smell great. <laughs> All right, and I don't know what the people down in uh, the state of Georgia are thinking. There is, of course, the First Coming Methodist Church website, and they can be found at? <laughs> yep. That's, uh, th that's for those selfish parishioners, I guess. <clears throat> All right, that's it for another installment of Actual Wacky Websites. All right, we're about one week in into New Year's, um, into the New Year. Everyone having a good New Year so far out there? Yeah? Good for you, good for you. Well, you know what, we found out that, uh, that some of the celebrities have made some New Year's resolutions, and we were able to get a hold of a few of them. And uh, right now, let's find out what some of these celebrity resolutions are all about. For example, Vice President Dick Cheney has made a re resolution to refrain from shooting friends in the face. <laughs> Although he will continue to stab them in the back. <laughs> all right. Or how about this, Drew Barrymore says that she wants to get in touch with her inner child, while Michael Jackson says he just wants to touch his inner child. <laughs> and this from Jessica Simpson, she signed up to be an organ donor. And she added that she also has several pianos that she's willing to donate too. <laughs> and finally, Nicole Richie has said that she wants to take her life in a new direction. Well, the California High Highway Patrol is waiting to find out just which direction that is. <laughs> All right. And we'll be right back with author Archer Mayer right after this, folks. Welcome back to Late Night Saturday, folks. Hey, for tickets to Late Night Saturday, you can always log on to our website, latenightsaturday.com, or stop by the University Mall in South Burlington to get free tickets to the show. 
Now, if you think that you folks have a lot of spirit out there, we're still looking for some groups out there, either a school group or an organization. If you have enough spirit, we want to see you here in the studio audience, and we will put you on the show. Yes. That's right. Now, just as fall has turned into winter here in the Northeast, tonight's guest has published his 17th book in the Joe Gunther Detective Series, which the Chicago Tribune describes as the best police procedurals being written in America. Here to tell us about the second mouse is Hello, is author Archer Mayer. Here he is. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <sighs> Welcome. You don't look at all like uh, Johnny Carson. No, no, no. It's no, good because no. he's almost dead. So <laughs> That's <just> right. <laughs> <laughs> How's your new year? It's uh, new. It is new. And fresh. And yeah. No bad, no bad surprises yet. So no. That's good. New year usually means for you uh, that you're starting a new book because you usually release a book. New in the year fall. is postpartum blues. That's oh. right. I'm seriously in the dumps here. Are you? Oh, it's just miserable. So you need some help. So as much as I can get. Ideas, anyone? That's, oh. that's how these books are done. It's just that way. Yeah. The whole, the whole Joe Gunther series I is done that way. I am Tabula Raza. Oh, can you see into the future then? No, I see nothing. I am a <laughs> blank slate. I just wait for information to fill my head and then I scribble. Is it really like that? Uh, then all of a sudden something's there and you just start <laughs> writing like a madman? <laughs> Don't I wish. <laughs> no, actually, what was it? There was one of the French writers that uh, his mistress used to lock him into a corked lined room and he would write in that way. But I'm not living in Switzerland, I'm not French, and I don't have a mistress, and I'm shy of cork. So <laughs> I've had to come up with a different technique. You kind of strike out in all quarters yeah, there, yeah, don't you? Yeah, that's the you know, life of a writer. It's all about deprivation. <laughs> <laughs> you have been reviewed by, by many people, and uh, as we mentioned when you it's came out... It cost me a lot of money. Does too. it? Yes. You oh, pay for all that, oh, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. And every time you mention that, there's probably royalties you have to pay. Uh, to yeah, the, it's to miserable. The, so miserable. I shouldn't mention L.A. Times, New no. York Times, Chicago Please Tribune, because it just Please ching, don't. That yeah, ching, ching, that. ching. It's awful. New York Times is awful too. Well, we have quite a budget here on the. Actually, we have no budget on this show. That's Good. right. I'm well, sorry. then mention them. Mention them. I don't care. They can they can chase after you like they chase after me, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You've got this latest book that, that's coming yes. out, the second mouse. The second mouse. Now. I was looking at some of the uh, some of the um, books that you've written. You've got uh, Borderlines, Skeleton's Knee, uh, Bellows Falls, yeah. uh, St. Albans Fire. Where did Second Mouse come from? My daughter. From your daughter? Yes. So, truth be told, my daughter sends me an email, which is properly addressed, Dad. And then it says, the early bird may get the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. Okay. And so this is my dark daughter. <laughs> That's the extent of the email. So what could I do except respond, daughter, which is what I call her. I serve an affirmation thing. You just got yourself a title. Well, it was a great one-liner. Unfortunately, I had no book. <laughs> And the way I write these books is sort of spontaneously, seat of the pants, you know, one idea leads to another, and I end up with a book, which didn't fit the title. <laughs> so, so the, the so punchline is, she's my daughter, I love her, suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and buy the damn book. And buy the damn book, exactly. <laughs> Don't ask what it means. And it just came out, when, when was it released? This uh, it was released uh, mid-October. Okay. Last year. Last year, uh, 06. 06, yeah. exactly right. And, and, and it's typical for you. This is uh, your 17th book. Um, you, you released the first one, what, in 1988? 88, yeah. I used to write history books before then. <laughs> 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 yeah. you're, you're a character. You, you were also. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the bottom of six kids. Yeah. That makes a difference. Oh, is that why? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. So, so my youngest son has something to look yeah. forward yeah, to absolutely. with this then. All right. If he's the mouthy one, yeah. Eh, he's not so much the mouthy one. That, my wife says that I'm the mouthy one. I can believe that. Yeah, yeah. she's, you know, she's but, raising four yeah. boys. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you were a police officer, is that correct? No, I still am in Bellows Falls. In Bellows Falls, yes. no yes. kidding. Yep, yep. He's a man of the law, everybody. Let's hear it for him. 
So, so this is, you take, your writings are from real life experience, is that correct? In some well, way? Well, yes and no. I mean, you can't, you can't actually take a real case and put it into a novel. That's a ethical problem there. But right. uh, you can certainly expose yourself uh, to a variety of things. I also work for the medical examiner's office as a death investigator. So I actually get into all sorts of nooks and crannies that if they didn't inspire my imagination, I'd have to go in for a lobotomy. You know, just... <laughs> so you're like Vermont's version of CSI. Yeah, when I had to buy my own rubber gloves and the flashlight batteries. You know that show, those flashlight batteries? I don't know where they get their funding, but I don't get the same funding. The flashlight batteries? Yeah, if you see CSI, they use flashlights in, in the noonday sun in Las Vegas. They've got those flashlights on all the time. <laughs> This obviously so bothers I, you. Well, no, I began using the flashlight on the job because I figured, well, obviously they solve every case they approach, so this must be the flashlight. Oh. All right, we're going to stop right there. We'll be right back right after this with more Late Night Saturday. <laughs> Mamma Mia's Pizzeria. We're more than just pizza. Offering a full menu of traditional Italian cuisine. Gateway Plaza, South Burlington. <laughs> Welcome back to Late Night Saturday, folks. Hey, since the 1970s, our musical guest has consistently delivered some of the finest, most dynamic bluegrass music ever heard in this corner of the country. Here to play off their latest CD, Mystery and Memories, with the song Phineas Gage, please welcome Banjo Dan. Thank you. One, two, three, one, two, three. Phineas Gage had a hole in his head. And everyone knew that he ought to be dead. Was it fate or blind luck? Though it never came clear, he kept keeping on year after year. Now Phineas Gage was a prince of a man, a hard-working foreman, the best in the land, resourceful, respectful, responsible to the pride of the railroad and crew. September 13 was a fine autumn day, and the crew was in Cavendish. Working away, drilling and blasting and laying the track across the green mountains and back. But something incredible happened that day when Gage was distracted and turning away and his tamping rod slipped down the hole he had drilled. It's a miracle he wasn't killed for it struck on the granite and threw off a spark and the gunpowder down in that hole went off with a roar and that big iron rod was right up through his skull and Phineas Gage had a hole in his head and everyone knew that he ought to be dead was it fate or blind luck though it never came clear he kept keeping on year after year poor Phineas lay in a heap on the ground and they knew he was gone as they gathered around but he sat up and started to talk and instead with a big bleeding hole in his head and he rode in an ox cart with nary a groan and arriving in town got out on his own took up on the porch took a chair and sat down as the townspeople gathered around and the doctor come a running and took off his specs and he said mr gage better cash in your checks well it's time you quit talking and learn how to pray you'll be meeting your maker today medical fellers did all they could do and not one of them reckoned he'd ever pull through but a couple months later well glory to god old phineas was back on the job but something had changed and he didn't last long he was loud and profane just could not get along and his friends turned away saying one thing's for sure oh gage is engaged anymore so he worked a few odd jobs on farms and in town Caught on with a sideshow and gathered around Big Iron Rod was his only true friend Going with him wherever he went A medical miracle, Phineas Gage Ended up down in Chile, driving a stage Lived eleven more years, missing part of his brain Till the day of his reckoning came There's 
a strange looking skull and a big iron rod down at Harvard they're still on display and the students and brain people all the world round still study the case till this day cause Phineas Gage had a hole in his head and everything knew that he ought to be dead was it fate or blind luck though it never came clear he kept keeping on year after year Guests of Late Night Saturday stay at the Windjammer Inn by Best Western, home of the Windjammer Restaurant and Upper Deck Pub, providing 30 years of great hospitality. The Windjammer Inn by Best Western is a local business run by local people. And welcome back to the show. I'm joined here with Banjo Dan and his brother Willie. That was super. Thank you so much. Hey, that's fun, fun music. I it hope is? you liked it. All right, we, I, how about you folks? Did you like it? <laughs> yes, indeed. See that? And you know what? That was a true story. 1848, Burlington and Rutland Railroad. Oh, is that right? Yes, sir. W was Phineas Gage? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was a real guy. And, and all, of your, uh, all of your songs are based on true stories. The, uh, the songs that we recorded on that album, Mystery and Memories, they're all true Vermont stories, yeah. Which is great. And uh, now let's talk about uh, Sky Blue Boys, because that's obviously about yeah. the brothers here. Well, the Sky Blue Boys, my brother Willie and myself, and we've been playing music ever since we were... Little bitty guys, and and uh, as opposed to the bluegrass band that we also play with, Banjo Dan and the Midnight Plowboys, we're just just the two of us. We play a lot of different acoustic instruments, and we favor the uh, the old time, old fashioned songs, and uh, we just play wherever we can, and we enjoy the heck out of it. And you've been doing it for a number of years. How many years? I, I know you started when you were young, but it's um, people have been talking about you forever. Yeah, they have. My ears are ringing. Yeah, We've been I've doing been... it for 35 years. For 35 years they've been playing. Unbelievable. So uh, you're going to play us a little something off Sky Blue Boys, is that correct? Well, we're going to do a, a song of the old-fashioned uh, just mandolin and guitar duo sound. I can't remember if this one's on there or not. but um, We're going to well, let you do that. And uh, what's right. the website for folks? Ah, Banjodan.com. And uh, just look there. You'll find where we're playing and uh, all our songs, all our CDs, and you can buy them and try them and see if you like them. All right, here they all are, right. Banjo Dan and his brother Willie. Here we go. <laughs> There's a sunny side where no wheels be tied. There's a road that we must go. There are shady vales, fertile hills, and vales where these flowers ever grow. Oh, the happy, happy, sunny, sunny, pretty rolling dales where the sweetest, sweetest joy and gladness ever there prevails. Where the sunshine ever lingers on the grand majestic hills of the happy, sunny side of life. Ah, oh, play it, Willie. Shady vales where no gladness swells And the clouds obstruct the view But a brighter way like the light of day Is awaiting now for you Oh, the happy, happy, sunny, 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 sunny pretty, pretty rolling dales Where the sweetest, sweetest joy and gladness ever there prevails The sunshine ever lingers on the tramp chest And kills of the happy, sunny side of life Ah, oh, Willie on the mandolin! 